Good evening and welcome to tonight's special meeting of the Board of Education, which is involved in, in the purpose of which is to so help select and come to a decision on a search firm for our superintendent search. Um, I have a few comments after we call the roll. So, Mr. Secretary, if you'll call the roll. Gladly. President Wasserman? Here. Vice President Baker? Here. Jerry Kaminsky? Here. Treasurer Brandstaff? Here. Member Gorton? Absent, She's but absent. hopefully coming for the second half of the meeting. Okay. Member McFarland? Here. Member Vanderkellen? Here. Okay. So we have a quorum. And as I stated, uh, Member Gorton hopes to be here in the second half of the meeting. She, she had a commitment she thought she was going to be able to get out of when we called the special meeting and turned out not, and she's going to hustle over from Saginaw to get here. Um, we'll go into, as far as at the stage tonight, uh, our mission tonight is to come to a decision, if at all possible, on which search firm to select, upon which decision I will notify all the firms tomorrow thereof. Um, in doing so, we'll go through the references we all talked about. Uh, you have a worksheet, if you want to use it, in the front of you that uh, Cindy's worked up a little, with a little of my input. Uh, gives you some basic facts about each of these that you can um, have. And uh, in addition, tonight, we have Mr. David Peterson, who you probably saw in the email to you, who would be the actual consultant we would use from Executive Connect uh, if we were so to choose them. And since the other firms were able to bring their actual recruiters to us upon the short notice we did for the meeting, I thought it was only fair for Executive Connect to have their recruiter here too, and fair to us. So that said, the first item on the agenda tonight is a request to address the board. There were no official ones. Is anybody in the audience Care to address the board, <laughs> except Mr. Peterson? <laughs> Seeing none, we'll move on to the um, uh, to our to our uh, agenda. First thing we'll do tonight is hear from Mr. Peterson. Uh, hopefully, you know, ten minutes of what he brings to the table, the searches he's done, particularly in Michigan, uh, the successes he's had, maybe some successes you haven't had, um, and then we'll spend about ten minutes asking him questions. Uh, upon which then we will go into the deliberations on on search firm uh, selection. We'll go through all of the uh, reference checks you've done, and we'll just have a general discussion outline how we'll do that when we get to that point. So, Mr. Peterson, the podium is yours. Cindy, um, you want to make sure the mic is on? Gail will give you instructions. Instruction on how to do that, so we are set to go. Um, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the board for uh, inviting me this evening. I appreciate the opportunity to address the board directly. I apologize for not being able to uh, uh, attend the uh, presentation that my colleague, Mr. Lobert, made, but uh, uh, sad to say I was firmly ensconced on the Florida Keys on a long-awaited vacation, so um, couldn't make it back. So I very much appreciate this opportunity. Um, tell you a little bit about myself and my involvement with School Exec Connect and um, uh, I know you've already heard a presentation on, on the process we would use, so I won't be repetitive about that. I'd just like to then follow up with any questions you might have. Um, I've been with School Exec Connect since it was founded in 2004. Uh, you may know that our firm was uh, founded by our CEO, Dr. Linda Hansen. Um, she'd been with a, a number, or actually basically one uh, search firm for a long number of years and, and decided that she wanted to try to start, uh, start up a a firm that would uh, use a little different lens and a little bit uh, friendlier process to boards in the search process. And so founded our firm in 2004. I was one of the founding partners in the firm, so I've been involved with School Exec Connect since its founding in 2004. Um, from that humble beginning for our firm, we've now conducted over 120 searches. We're the fastest growing search firm in the Midwest. And uh, when I retired from my position as superintendent of the Northern Suburban Special Education District in Highland Park, Illinois, which is comparable to an intermediate district uh, here in Michigan, um, uh, my wife and I uh, moved to Michigan as quickly as we could because we've uh, spent many, I kind of grew up in, in western Michigan. My grandfather had a farm up there. And so we moved back up here. And I was tapped to lead the efforts to um, branch our firm uh, more firmly into, into Michigan, and so we've been leading that effort for the past few years. Um, we are primarily a Midwest-based search firm, other like, uh, uh, unlike other firms that uh, propose, you know, that do firms all over the country. The large majority of our firms are here in the Midwest, but we like to think we have a national reach in terms of um, 
uh, reaching out to candidates across the country because of the breadth and experience of our associates. Uh, we've grown from in 2004 from those first five partners that founded the firm to over 45 uh, associates, uh, seven partners, and several senior associate partners at that point. Um, in my personal experience, um, I've either led or been part of uh, more than 30 searches of the, the searches the firm has done. Um, everything from small districts, suburban districts, metro districts, non-metro districts, intermediate districts, um, and single schools. Um, done a number of char charter school searches um, as well. So I think we have a breadth of experience. Um, across all those, I think what we bring to the table is a, uh, a process that is focused on what the board's needs are and what the district needs are. Um, we will always give you, and I will always give you, my best advice in the search process, but we fully understand that this is the most important thing that this Board of Education has in, on its plate right now, and it's your process. So it will be run the way you want and have changes made in the process as you desire it. And so we spend a lot of time on the front end of the process making sure that it's exactly the way you want the process to go. And we know impor how important transparency is um, in your community, and we'll work with you every step of the way to make sure that it's a transparent, inclusive process that gives the board the data it needs to make a good decision. Um, with that, I'd like to respond to questions you might have. Uh, I'll lead with one right away. I don't always usually let folks address the board, but one thing I wanted to have you address to the board was uh, some discussion on what searches you particularly oh. conducted in Michigan over the last several years. Yes, I apologize. Um, you asked me that at the beginning and I didn't. Um, direct searches that I've participated in include Birmingham, uh, Michigan, um, a search we did uh, just last uh, year um, for the Birmingham schools, uh, Rochester, Michigan, um, which was just recently uh, completed. In fact, um, you talked about uh, situations that didn't work out as we wish. We did the Rochester search twice. Um, the, the first candidate did not was not successful in the district, and uh, as you know, we have a guarantee that if a candidate is not successful, we'll redo the search um, free of charge, expenses only, and we did that in Rochester, and thankfully have had a successful conclusion to that search. That was just completed. Um, Bloomfield Hills um, search, uh, Lapeer, Michigan, a non-metro area um, that was a, a very successful search. Um, West Michigan Academy of Arts and Academics is a uh, charter school search um, that I, I led. And um, I'm currently, um, I'm not sure whether it's going to evolve into a search, but we're working with a board with a Ann Arbor Learning Community in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Um, and they're deciding whether or not they were going to do a search. So the firm is working with their board to collect data uh, from the community to determine whether or not they want to uh, seek a new leader. Um, I wasn't personally involved in, but our firm also did Novi and Wald Lake in the last three years. Okay, and thank you for your candor on, on the one. Now I'll open up to the board for questions. Yeah, um, Mr. Peterson, in in the uh, um, in the, the recent history of so many retirements, and how it can be a challenge to find the superintendents to have a good good depth to the the candidate pool. Um, how would you think that your search firm would give us the best candidates and the best depth uh, to the candidate pool and not limiting that to those who just put their application in, but those that turn over rocks, beating the bushes, so to speak, because potentially there's a number of candidates out there that could be convinced that this could be a better opportunity for them. Um, they're a better fit for maybe our district. Yeah, it's an excellent sure. question. and. Uh, it's, it's a good question because it is getting um, more difficult to have a deep candidate pool um, they, um, for a variety of reasons. Uh, uh, number one, it's a tough job. Uh, <laughs> number two, um, mobility between states has declined um, because of the changes in pension systems. So you used to have a lot more mobility. It used to be easier to recruit an Illinois candidate to come here. and. Um, and that's not the case right now. And then additionally, uh, you're all well aware of um, some of the press that some of the Michigan legislature's actions in regard to public education have gotten over the last few years. And Michi Michigan is becoming less of a destination uh, for school superintendents. Um, all that said, um, I think we've pr produced some really quality pools through number one, a broad reach 
of advertising and a, a broad reach of our associates. I, when we go out to recruit candidates, the first thing I will do is uh, send a blast email to all 50 of our firm members with a profile of your school district and say, I would like to know some good leaders who would be interested in coming to a community like this that's got a solid board. Um, and, and we capitalize on that, that you've got a, a, an effective, hardworking, and collaborative board that is looking for a partnership with the new superintendent. That's a big selling point for a quality district. Um, I looked back in, in Rochester to look at the candidate pool, and, and interestingly, you'd think, oh my gosh, Rochester, Michigan, they're going to have a huge candidate pool. We had 26 total applicants for Rochester. But when I looked at that, six of those candidates were candidates that we'd recruited. And the, and the successful candidate was one that we'd recruited. Now, uh, to be totally honest, he might have applied as well. It's possible. But I knew of this candidate from a previous search that we'd done, um, made a call to him and said, this could be a match for you. Um, are you willing to put yourself out there? And, and I don't call it arm twisting, but you've got to convince uh, quality candidates that there's a potential match with the district because especially in states with sunshine, sunshine searches like we have here, once a candidate makes that initial pool of candidates, they're out there all the time. And, uh, and it's a tough process for candidates, so you have to be friendly to them in the process as well because um, especially in these days of the, um, uh, the blog, uh, things are written about candidates that uh, their kids read and everything else and 50% and of it isn't true. Um, so you have to really make sure you're candidate friendly in the process as well. And then a, a follow-up question is, is, is something that I heard when uh, all of us board members had uh, some homework to do, checking references, and one thing that did come up is that uh, initially a uh, school board in uh, Ohio, they had their hopes set up that they could go, go across the whole country, find the best person, but it was the pension rule limitations that are not transferable, so I think that could be a lesson learned just with us doing our homework that it may not be as easy to bring somebody across the state lines because of reforms and changes where they'd have to start anew with their pension, um, I would say, um, uh, years of credits, if you will. Yeah. To, to be perfectly honest with you, the, the river's flowing the other way right now. Um, several really high-profile Illinois districts have hired uh, Michigan superintendents within the last two years. Three of those searches we've done, um, and it's been uh, – Michigan superintendents taking early retirements and, and going to Illinois um, and working, which which is just perceived as having a more positive environment. Um, although I got to be honest with you also that um, I've had uh, the last two searches I've been involved in in Michigan, we have had uh, a number of quality out-of-state candidates because the quality of life in Michigan uh, brings certain people back. Um, if they've ever vacationed here or their family had a vacation place, it does dry. I had a superintendent from Aspen, Colorado, believe it or not, that wanted to come back to, wants to come back to Michigan. Uh, so it does go both ways, but it's, it's a tougher, tougher environment. Do, do you have any, like, lesson learned from your experience in Rochester, like something that they did differently the second time that they should have done the first time that maybe we can learn from as we go? Uh, yeah, we both learned from that process. Um, it, at, at risk of oversimplifying it, I don't think a board should ever settle on a candidate because they didn't like the other candidates. And, and I don't think they'd be mad at me for saying that. Um, and we all found out something about that process, and, and I think the, the, the board selected a candidate that they liked, but they didn't. They weren't sure it was a perfect fit, but they knew they didn't want a, a couple of other candidates. Um, second thing that I've learned is um, that, um, especially in a community um, where there's a lot of community involvement, that it's very, very important to stick with the process. Um, you're going to design a process at the front end of this that's going to provide for a lot of community involvement and, um, and a lot of input into the process and just stick with the process to the end and don't get drawn off by external forces. That's, that's probably the thing that most frequently befalls all of us in the process, getting sidetracked. Before we go to the next question, Cindy's giving me the high sign that there might be interference from a cell phone. If everybody could check that they're off. I mean, there's not very many people here. Could be any of us. Off. Mine's dead. Off, off, yeah. Off, off, yeah. Okay, we'll press on. Um, next. 
I have, I have a couple. Um, you've, you've made some very good points that answered some of mine. Um, one where you said the, when you talked about the open meetings process, you obviously are conversant with that with Michigan. That was one of my lead ones. Um, I'm going to ask you a tougher question, but I'd like you to opine on it. I think I know how you're going to answer it, but I'd ask you to give you as much candor as you could. Okay. Uh, obviously, when we look at the schools that you've done placements for over the last two to three years, um, you've soaked up a lot of good candidates to place in those schools. Mm -hmm. And now here we come along. Um, what's candidate pool look like out there? Um, I'm going to say it depends, and that's not a that's not giving myself wiggle room. Um, I believe I I I haven't I I confess I what I know about Midland I know primarily from talking with uh, Mr. Lobert who did a presentation here and a good deal of web research um, since you called me. Um, you have a number of selling points that I think can attract a number of quality candidates. I don't think you're going to see candidate pools of 50 or 55 candidates, to be real honest with you. I, I think we can expect for anywhere from high 20s to mid 30s in this environment. But what we're selling is a quality school district in good financial shape with a great reputation and a quality community and a quality board of education. And you can sell those factors to quality candidates who are looking for a place to go. The other piece of advice I would give the board, and again, this is just advice, is you don't want to limit yourself to sitting superintendents. Um, we've had, we're getting a number of high quality candidates who are associate or assistant superintendents who have excellent leadership abilities, and to just eliminate them because they haven't been a sitting superintendent is a mistake in this kind of environment. The new superintendent of Rochester has, is an assistant, has been an assistant superintendent for the last eight years. Um, so my advice is cast the net wide, sell yourself, and we'll sell you, and, uh, and then have a process where you get to know the candidate as well as they get to know you. Comment. I actually, um, when you talk about casting the net wide and, and um, not just Michigan candidates, I call, uh, talk to Susan Hill in Birmingham for quite some length. And, um, is it, and so uh, she talked about their uh, superintendent is from Madison, Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. And uh, kind of, it's not really funny, but joked that coming to Michigan with all that they'd been through in the last couple of years with education in uh, Wisconsin, and with Michigan facing some of the new laws and right to work and, and all those kinds of things, he felt quite confident and they feel quite confident that it's just an excellent fit. And she just had marvelous things to say, it was her words. So, oh, um, well, good, good. Well, that's, that's another good example of a candidate we recruited. Um, we said, if you, could survive, if you could survive in Madison, you're going to love <laughs> Birmingham. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and that's you know, of, the, of the placements you've made, you did indicate now two of those Five or six. Uh -huh. um, one you recruit. One you rec both were recruited. The, the, those two, yes. Can you can you mention through that list uh, were they all recruited or how many were um, applicants that? Let me look and then I'll so I'm giving you an accurate answer. Um, Birmingham uh, recruited. Uh, Rochester the second time recruited. First time not recruited. Um, Bloomfield Hills, not recruited, an, an applicant. Um, and, and understand when I say not recruited, those people are applied on our website, but they got to get through us first. Because you know part of our process is we interview any candidate and vet any candidate before it gets to the board. Uh, Lapeer um, was kind of an application and a recruitment. Um, found out about this person, said, are you interested? And they said, yes, I was going to be anyway. Um, and uh, Novi, I didn't do directly, but he was recruited, I believe, and Wald Lake was recruited. All right, I only have one question. Will you attend all of our meetings? or? Um, will I will attend as many as you want. Um, th this is the board's process, so uh, we certainly uh, uh, our, we conduct the focus groups on your behalf, so we, we would uh, obviously be there for all of those. If um, the board um, wants us to sit in on their interviews of each candidate, we, uh, we will. Um, 
we don't uh, traditionally recommend that we actively participate in that process, but are simply uh, attend as a support. Um, we put a lot of work into those meetings, in particularly the interviews on the front end. Um, we would design interview uh, protocols, especially for your initial screening of candidates with the board, including development of rubrics that the board could use to evaluate the particular attributes they're looking for, um, and ha put a lot of uh, time into the front end of the process. Also, if the board would like, uh, we will participate and facilitate the, um, the selection process as well, if the board, if that would be helpful to the board. But you personally, will you be there? Yes. Thank you. I Thank know you very much. For a very short period of time. No, just uh, fine. Just fine. It's a beautiful drive. I be assured you having a personal face and hearing the voice from you makes a big difference in all Terrific. of our wondering as we Terrific. go to make our decision, Terrific. whichever way we make it. All right. Well, again, thank you for the opportunity. And uh, regardless of your decision, we wish you the very best in your search. Thank you Thank very you. much. And you'll be hearing from me tomorrow. Great. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Um, the next part of the meeting now is now that we've heard from every lead recruiter, um, it's time to re to um, move into the next steps of the process. Um, what I'd like to do, and I found very useful the last time we did this, there were some fits that were obvious, obviously potentially good and obviously not as good. So rather than labor on everybody's inputs uh, and references on every district, I will ask you, I'm going to poll you for your number one through four. And if everybody has the same number four, we're not going to go into the issues of discussing it. We'll save it for the ones that are vital. If everybody has the same number three, we won't bother discussing them. And if there's a clear winner of all number one, we'll discuss it. And if it, it gets the references and understand if it's very clear, then we'll pick it. But if it's not clear between one and two, we'll, we'll wrestle it out for a little while. So rather than doing all of these to exhaustion, let's save it for the ones that we all feel good about because i got a premonition. I know there's going to be some not as highly thought of as some others. So that said, um, Yvonne has weighed in. Um, and what I will be going to do is let me know who your number one, two, three, and four is. I'll record them and then see if there's a consistent theme between all of us and move to the next step. Yvonne had uh, School Exec Connect is number one, uh, uh, HYA is their number two, Hazard Young and Matia, and MLI is number three, and MASB is number four. And while I have the podium, I will say that reflects exactly where I am at after hearing our gentleman this evening. Because I have SAC, HYA, MLI, and MASB. <laughs> so that said, I'll go to my left and say, Scott, what was your, what's your pecking order based on what you know now? Before I give you my pecking order, I just want to make a comment. Um, Although I appreciate Mr. Peterson's time tonight, and I don't want any yep. feedback, I didn't think it was fair to the other three candidates that they came back and got a second bite at the apple. His presentation, in my opinion, was not substantively different than Larry Loberts. Um, and really what it did is gave Exec Connect, I think, an unfair advantage to address issues that came up in the reference check and further questions that we had that the other three candidates are not going to get. That being said, my pecking order is number one, MASB, two is Exec Connect, three is Hazard Young, and four is Michigan Leadership Institute. Okay. Fair enough on your comments. That was a, that was a tough decision. I just did not want to buy sight unseen if yeah. they were going to do that. That's that the reason he was here. That was an excellent decision, though. He so. is the true leader. So. Yeah, we, I, didn't, I didn't want to make a decision yes or no. That was yeah, I think one thing so. that I heard so often was that it's not necessarily – the search firm that we pick, it's the individual that we're working with that really makes the difference. So yep. I would echo that too. I heard that in several of them. Make sure that you talk to the Recruiter. individual that mm -hmm. will be leading yeah. the search. And I think and, and it was our fault that, that he wasn't nice. here the first time, not theirs. I want to make right. that abundantly clear. It was because of our wanting to get the process starting and you know, a week and a half notice to these firms. Right. And he's down in Key West. I guess he could have flown back, et cetera, but I would not expect that of them. So but it was only fair that he could shout. Anyway, good comment, Scott. I'm not arguing it's, it's bad. I just want to give you the reasons why I had him here. Okay. Uh, John. Um, my uh, first choice, um, and, and I made my, um, my selections mainly before I listened to the presentation mm -hmm. uh, from SEC, the second one. Uh, number one for SEC, 
number two for HYA, number three for MLI, and number four for MASV. Okay. Kim? Well, it already sounds like everybody's agreeing with what I say, or I'm thinking, so one is School Exec Connect and four is MASV. Okay, and out, uh, number two or number three? No, they were really close. So. Close, okay. Angela. Yeah, I'm going to have to <laughs> go with the way you, you said that. But my number one was SEC, and that was, you know, based on before he came in, but the people that I talked to. Um, and if I had to pick a number two, I'd probably go with IHYA, and then number three, MLI, and number four, MASV. And Lynn. It's interesting because I, I, I knew my number one, SEC, but the other three, a lot of it was based on my conversations, believe it or not, and some of the history from before okay. and comments. So I ended up with school exec one, MLI is two, MASB is three, and HYA is four. Okay. I'm not going to draw the conclusion that we have a clear consensus, uh, although most people have indicated SEC is their number one choice. Uh, many have indicated HYA, but others MLI and, uh, and SEC is number two. Uh, and MASB has been at the bottom on all but two. So why don't we go through the laborious portion of hearing what other districts had to say to see if that does dissuade any of us from any of our, I'll call it first pass opinions. And they are just first pass opinions. These, these reference checks could change someone's mind mm -hmm. real fast. And I was just trying to see if there was a jump out and then go to the references, but I don't see one. Let's start though at the top ones uh, first. Let's, let's talk about SEC. Uh, each of you were given, Kim, you ended up with three, so I don't know mm -hmm. if you had an SEC choice or not. Yes, I had one okay. SEC from Wild Lake Consolidated, and Peggy Cassegrim highly recommended School Exec Connect, and they also had a strong candidate, which I'm keeping that information for us for a later meeting. And when I first heard that Carol was retiring, I uh, emailed Ingrid Day, and she strongly recommends School Exec Connect, too, from Bloomfield Hills. So okay. I love to benchmark with them and as far as um, MASB I did you hear anything negative on SEC no okay. um, for MASB I actually called my sister because she's on the Grand Rapids School Board and she said MASB did um, good preliminary work um, but they came to a consensus in their interim superintendent um, filled all the needs that the community wanted and, but they were actually going to go with School Exec Connect if they had continued the search. So. Ah, okay. Okay. Uh, let me keep staying on SEC if I can. We'll do each each person each, instead of each person at a time. We'll do each firm at a time. Um, Scott, what were your impressions on SEC, and what did you learn? I was not uh, able to get in touch with anybody at Novi, which was the district that you assigned to me. Okay. Um, sent some emails, made some phone calls. Okay. Uh, nothing back. So. I didn't get any feedback uh, from anybody in that regard. Okay, fair enough, and he did not do that search, so it may, okay. Yes, SEC? Yes, um, um, I was asked to uh, contact uh, Bloomfield Hills um, Board of Education. I spoke with the president at the time that they did their superintendent search, which is about three years ago. They ended up picking local, and uh, they felt that it was a solid experience, uh, that they were competitive, they were happy with the candidates. Um, <coughs> They, uh, they felt that um, that one, um, one aspect was is that uh, and the feedback I heard could have been done better is that they might have been able to maybe articulate what they were after as opposed to uh, standard recommendations, um, more customized, if you will. Um, they were okay with the first slate that was presented, um, and they actually went internally and picked locally, um, and they, they felt everything was... Uh, as far as the focus group meetings, um, they liked the fact that um, they did work with the online aspects um, because uh, busy parents, people that could give input when they had time, maybe through an online or after hours fashion, they may not have been able to make all the meetings, so they felt they were sort of innovated in, in that regard. Um, and then um, what they actually ended up doing is one of the board members had experience in uh, HR and was an attorney, and they actually, they actually didn't go into the part where getting help with the superintendent's contract uh, and then looking at pay scales and uh, surveys and so forth. So they used some internal lists with the ISDs 
and they actually did that internally with the experience on the board, which is kind of a rarity. Uh, somebody worked in EHR and had legal background, so it worked out. They're still there, and they're very happy. Okay. <coughs> um, okay. Angela, CC. All right. Yes, I actually spent a long time talking with the board president in Rochester, which she had um, <laughs> brought that up. So we rehashed a lot of what happened there. Um, so they, like he said, have hired two superintendents in the last two years. Their new one just started this past Friday. Um, and before that, they actually had an interim because they had to let the first one go. Um, one of the things, and hopefully we would not be in this situation, but she said they did not get any hassle from SEC when they had to use their guarantee and go back in. And she said, you know, technically the guarantee is like one year, and they were a little bit beyond that, but still they um, – did not give them any hassle at all to um, go back out. Um, she kind of felt that one of the issues that caused them to be in that situation to begin with is that they had an internal candidate that was pretty much going around telling everyone that this individual was going to get the job, thought that they were a shoe in And because of, what did he call it, the sunshine law, you know, the board president thought that it probably scared off a lot of people from even applying because they didn't want to put themselves out there mm -hmm. if they thought that they already had someone that was probably going to get it. So she said this second time around she thought the candidate pool was much stronger. So she said really she doesn't put the blame on SEC, she more puts it on what they were doing and they probably really should have more vocally stressed and yeah pushed that down. Um, yeah, and I mean, there's some other things. I mean, she gave me a lot of stuff that we can get into later once we get further in the process, some things that they definitely did the second time, too, to make it um, stronger. She really very much liked Dave Peterson. She said he was very professional, got right back to them whenever they needed to call. Um, the other two employees, because I asked kind of like what you had asked him about, you know, who's doing the work? You know, we had the list of people, and she said Dave was – the person they saw. The other people do a lot of the behind the scenes stuff because they do talk and interview every candidate that applies. So those other people are doing a lot of the behind the scenes work, but Dave's really the person that at the board that um, we would end up working with. Um, she thought that the SEC, their pre-interviews, um, that they really had a good feel for what they were looking for as a district. Um, That's about all that would have any bearing on <coughs> decision. Yeah. Lynn, SEC. SEC, um, as I said, I talked to Susan Hill from Birmingham, and uh, unfortunately she was at work, so she called, and then she had to take a call, and then we talked, and then she had to take a call, and she didn't get a chance to call me back, so I didn't get all my questions answered, but just from the voice first voicemail she left, and in our conversation, they are very, very satisfied. They use somebody else other than I, Mr. Peterson. But um, she emphasized um, also that they had a, a problem with their last um, search a couple, a few years ago, and it was the same kind of thing. It was an internal candidate issues, and but this time, <coughs> and they weren't using SEC then. But she said this time they had learned from their last search and working with. Uh, SEC, she said her, one of her key points was when you hi whoever you hire, you have to trust them and follow the process. It's so, so important that trust and that they know what they're doing. And um, also emphasize interview the person who is doing the search, which we had the opportunity to do tonight. And like I said, after that, I just didn't get a chance to talk to her. But um, Interesting enough, my brother lives in the Birmingham district and has an elementary and a middle school child. So I was talking to my sister-in-law a little bit, but we didn't get a real opportunity to um, talk about it. But they're very happy and satisfied with the system. And she said, I don't know the superintendent personally, but um, seems like a good guy. So. OK, let's talk about, uh, since the majority of people had HYA as their number two, or number two-ish. Let's talk about uh, HYA. And uh, Scott, I'll start with you again. Uh, HYA was actually my number three, um, and I've had the same luck with Novi. Uh, I was given a district out of California. 
Um, the woman I had attempted to reach on a number of occasions, Valerie Arkin, uh, was just not available non-responsive. And, and non-responsive. So yep. again, I, yep. I hit two out of four, <laughs> but... It, and, and to be fair, Scott, I'm not criticizing at all. One of the things I'll comment on now because I was going to comment on it later. One of the things that, that um, really made me want to see this recruiter is my concerns with what we saw the recruiter at HYA, there weren't very many Michigan placements. And most of you will talk to somebody outside of Michigan concerning HYA. Mm. So I thought it was very, very important that we saw that recruiter uh, firsthand, because, largely because of that. So, Scott, thank you. I, I, some of you guys got hellacious lists because some of these places were Connecticut yeah. and Colorado, <laughs> you know, Lord knows where, because that's what they had that were roughly similar to Mi Michigan. Okay. Um, I, did, uh, I did successfully talk to uh, um, the HYA uh, contact out of Mentor, Ohio, which is a suburb of uh, west of Cleveland. East. Uh, or east of Cleveland. <laughs> and uh, in the Buckeye State, uh, no... Uh, no, nothing uh, that I'm a Buckeye uh, graduate here, but uh, he was very happy uh, with their experience. Um, and uh, what they had said with their experience is that uh, HYA did beat the Bushes and they did convince a candidate that coming on to their, uh, their district was a, a good fit for them. Um, and uh, they had six to eight people, I think, uh, recommended as final candidates. Um, and uh, the lead person from HYA that they worked with was a retired superintendent. They liked that because they felt that um, they understood the position and the dynamics going on. Um, and the people are thrilled uh, with their superintendent. Um, their district is about the same size as ours. And um, they, uh, they, they just, uh, they're about nine months into uh, the new superintendent. Um, but what's really interesting is, is that um, is the first slate was not thrilling. They did go to a second slate. Okay, um, and they felt that uh, encouraging the digging, beating the bushes, did uh, make uh, some depth to the the applicant pool, and that made all the difference. Um, they're the ones that ran into the pension situation. They're the ones, the board of education, that said we're going for the best person, and and so, but it was a barrier because a person may be uh, 10, 20 years into their career, and it was a barrier, and so they learned a lot on that. Um, that's where I got that from. Um, they felt that HYA was very independent uh, with working with the focus groups and working with the community. Um, they felt like they got to uh, uh, kind of the finger on the pulse of the community and what they thought they wanted in the next superintendent. Um, and then lastly, uh, I did look at uh, how they supported through uh, the follow, follow through as far as uh, contract negotiations, looking at surveys of pay and so forth. Uh, they thought HYA was very helpful um, and then um, they were able to get survey information and so forth. So. We're all pretty happy. John, did you mention where the candidate was, the final selected candidate was from? Oh, boy. Um, Just curious if it was I know Ohio or suburban Cleveland or? I believe I believe that it was in state um, because of the issue they, they the ran into. Issue. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. yeah. If, you know, I'll comment here. The suburban districts have a huge advantage right now, as you heard from all the guys talking about housing, when yes. you can get your promotion by driving to it instead of moving to it. It yeah, really Rad expands. Rochester's yeah. with someone. Same thing. It More really expands people. the candidate pool quickly. Sure. Um, let's see. Kim, HYA. Uh, Carol Slog from Z Zealand School said the superintendent left within a year. I had asked her a long list of questions, and she had a very <laughs> short reply. <laughs> the superintendent left within a year. In 2020, she did not feel HYA had brought high-quality candidates to the table. Okay, a, a weaker slate. Mm -hmm. And did... If they left within a year, did, did she mention if she's gone through it again? No, I didn't. Who she After selected? she said that, I didn't pursue it. I just said, thank you for your honesty. <laughs> and got out of Dodge. <laughs> <laughs> Don't blame me. Do we know if that was the same individual that would be working with us on Zealand? You know, he was from East Grand Rapids. Did they from have? From HYA? Yeah, from HYA. Was that the person? Yeah, that uh, I it is. Uh, okay. Because was he the recruiter for I Zealand? did call him today. Okay. Or was it today? I can't remember now. Might have been uh, Monday. To ask him if he had any other Michigan okay. references because the Michigan reference list was so thin. Okay. And um, he mentioned it, and uh, I'll chime in now, I guess, while I got the podium. Um, they're in the middle. Portage is in the middle right. of their thing. Carl, that's how I got pulled out of the FFO meeting, that phone call. Um, 
their board president would tell you that uh, they're way too early in the process to comment. They're very happy so far. Mm -hmm. They have just finished the profile. Okay. And the board just accepted the profile. So okay. you can't comment on slates or, or okay. anything yet. Uh, but so far is very happy with the approach they've used. Okay. Okay, but cannot comment beyond that. Okay. But that's, that, that's the paucity of the Michigan well, and that's why when she said Zealand, I Zealand. thought, you know, because mine was yep. Connecticut. So once again, it's not the individual. So I didn't know if maybe this was our and, one And example. Zealand was his. He did. Okay. Uh, my part purpose thing about okay. Zealand was his. Okay. And I think Lynn's going to talk about Gross Point. Gross Point was his. At least he told me I, it was his. I had no contact. The person did not Never call came me. Back. I emailed. I had no, no information to share. Okay. Sorry. I'll, I'll HYA with Angela. All right, so I talked with Catherine Albin from Fairfield, Connecticut. I talked to her for a long time. She um, gave me a lot of good, you know, advice on a lot of things. Um, but they have used HYI twice. In, um, she was on the, she's no longer on the school board. She's still very involved, though, in um, financial aspects of the school. She was on the board for 12 years and hired two superintendents. They used HYI both times. Um, she really stressed that HYI is very intuitive into what your board's like. She said they will immediately figure out what kind of board you have and um, note that. And I think other people have stressed that to us too, that you know we're not just looking for candidates. Candidates are also looking at us. Um, there wasn't anything that they didn't like about um, HYI. She said they'll do anything for you for a price. You know, very, you know, but they'll do whatever you want them to do. Um, and that's probably about all I have that would be okay. relevant to what we're deciding tonight. And Lynn, no response from Gross Point. No response. Okay. okay, so let's go to MLI. Scott. MLI did have some success with, although uh, I guess it's to be determined. I did speak with the president of the uh, Dexter School Board, uh, Mr. Cobbler. He, uh, our conversation was relatively short. He said uh, they have gone through several superintendents over the past five years and have been using MLI for each one. Um, he did say that uh, he felt MLI was very busy and that they were most times unresponsive to emails. Mm. Not completely unresponsive, more in that they were kind of dragging their feet and returning emails. However, they did respond to direct phone calls. Uh, I, I thought the fact that they've had several superintendents over the last <laughs> five years spoke volumes in my mind mm -hmm. and uh, the rest of our conversation was small talk. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Keep buying the same car, why would you? <laughs> John. Okay, <clears throat> I was uh, not successful in uh, contacting my MLI um, uh, reference, uh, but it's interesting how you had just mentioned about Portage. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, I think that you had a little bit of uh, feedback about how the result was. I think they just selected their yeah. getting getting into the. And Did so MLI do the current super or the, <coughs> the departing superintendent they had search? A, yeah, they had an interim uh, superintendent, I believe, and so I, I didn't get any response back. But it sounds like we've at least had a feel for yeah. uh, you know where they're at in the process at least. So um, I don't know if they had an interim because didn't they just? I'll, I, I'll be I'll be very careful with my words here okay. in public. Um, there were some things that aren't real pleasant in Portage right now uh, with the superintendent who is leaving. And uh, go to MLI. We can I just leave it there. Okay. It's just interesting. And that was an in, that was an internal candidate. Who that's was what your interim. That's is that is that what it was? Yeah. Okay. It wasn't clear to me about that. Okay. Okay. So, okay. so they so they may or may not have been involved in that search unless they if, since it was an interim. Okay. Okay. Tim? Okay, for MLI, Tim Odekirk, I spoke with him, and he said... What district? I'm sorry. I'm afraid Mount Pleasant. Get you. Okay. He said that issues arose and they ended up hiring from within. MLI did not listen, and Tim felt the candidates were not MPS quality. So. Okay. All right. Well, <coughs> I had the opportunity to call the school district that I graduated from, um, St. Joseph, and... Um, St. Joseph, similar to Midland, they're like Midland's Dow Chemical, St. Joseph is Whirlpool Corporation. Um, they have been through three superintendents in the last 12 years. This is the first time they have ever used a search firm in um, looking for a superintendent. They used MLI really just for the data collection part at the beginning. 
they really were not interested. She said, we already have questions we ask. We already, you know, they really just needed them at the beginning and felt that that was very valuable. I mean, actually a lot of people stress that the real value in this is that initial data collection on what you're looking for, that that is, you know, what was so important. So that's really what they used MLI for, and they really did not use them after that point. They liked them because they were able to pick and choose because they did get some kickback from the community on, wait, we've never paid before for something like this, and why are we paying now? Um, so anyway, from that standpoint, they liked what they got, but they did not use them for the whole process. So, so does that mean MLI did not bring forward a slate? Um, I don't, let me see. Maybe they did, and then at that, that point, I'm sorry, I should have, okay. you know, um, she said they let, let all the group forums, found that to be very beneficial, um, but that St. John already has a list of questions, so they didn't use them for the service. They ended up with 28 applicants. Um, they didn't use MLI for any contract negotiations. Um, they had a different MLI rep than the one that we would have had. Um, so, okay. yeah, just, you know, it, 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 the way I was ranking them, because I got into because I called Grand Rapids, too, on the ones, you know, the two that I called, they didn't use them for the whole process. So, you know, that's why I was very interested to hear what other people had to say for a couple of the search firms, because the people I talked to didn't give me the whole picture for me to really assess what they were like from start to finish, which is what we're looking for. Okay. Lynn. All righty. Actually, MLI, I called um, Clawson, which is down in the, I didn't realize that it was Oakland. down in Oakland County. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's a little, he said it's a smaller, smaller district. Yep. But they've used them twice. And he's another one. We played telephone tag. Um, they're both out of town. And the enthusiasm, he said they're great, professional. They used them both times. They hired wonderful candidates both times. They used them in 2005 and 2010, and let's see, MLI worked very well with the board, they managed, the, helped manage the process well, and if they needed it, they were just excellent coaches uh, for them as they went through. Uh, most of their candidates were from, po from the postings. They, in their case, there was little recruiting. Um, the board came up with their questions, and the community was very involved. He said it was a great process how that worked, um, and uh, they helped them along where, where they needed it. Um, the man, let's see, they said management was in very important. Again, the process, and uh, they did, they did very well. This gentleman, Kevin um, Turner, was extremely complimentary of MLI and sounded like they would use them again. So, okay. but a different recruiter, you said. This gentleman was, his name was Mike Wilmot. Okay. So it's another different okay. one then. Okay. And I will comment on MLI while I didn't do reference checks to try to do different aspects of homework. If you will notice Lynn's comment about Clawson being one of the smaller districts mm -hmm. in Oakland yeah. County, um, I tried to find, just sign your districts that look most like a Midland situation in terms of expectations, type of community, demographics, community, et cetera. I had a hard time finding those on the MLI list, if you've noticed. Also on the MASB list when we get to that. Uh, those are the two observations I had about MLI and MASB was, is finding something similar was extraordinarily, relatively difficult, okay? St. Joe was probably the closest one, mm -hmm. Angela, the rest. Yeah, I mean, it, from a population yeah. size, it's smaller, but from an expectation and the type of community, it would be very, very yeah. similar. He made a point, too, because they are down in Oakland County, and even though it is smaller, the pool is so different, kind of what we've already referred to. People flow, it can flow in and out and around in a much easier manner. Yep. Um, so that helped their success, he does, too. Okay. So. And that leaves us with MASB. Scott. Uh, MASB, as you know, was my number one choice. Um, I was able to speak with a board member from the Pontiac School District. Uh, she had indicated that... Um, they had gone through, also gone through a number of superintendents uh, recently, and prior to using MASB, they had used other search firms, although for whatever reason, she wouldn't tell me uh, which search firms they were. Um, she did say that uh, their current superintendent was installed by MASB, and she thought that MASB had presented a solid first slate, that uh, the recruiters were very professional, 
very efficient. Um, she said that they were highly involved in the community and that they, she liked that they used web-based initiatives to solicit community input. Um, she indicated that uh, in her opinion and what she felt from her other board members uh, based on their experience with MASB, they would use MASB again if they had to. Um, and then she shared a couple uh, beliefs that I feel strongly about. Uh, one, that MASB is very cost effective. Um, she also said that uh, she liked their two-year guarantee and she feels that uh, it's a good idea to support Michigan business um, when the opportunity presents itself. And that's, that's all I have from her and I, I share her sentiment. Okay, thank you. John. I was not able to get a response um, and uh, I will defer. Who did you have? Um, the school district I had was Waverly. Oh, okay. That was the one I was hoping because it's a little smaller. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, Kim, you already commented on MASB. Right. Yep. Angela? Well, I had Grand Rapids as the one that you'd given me, so I talked with their board president. So, and they hired MASB predominantly because of the cost factor. They actually paired with their local ISD. Um, and um, they, MASB, because of their familiarity with Michigan, um, so MASB helped them to collect the data to narrow down what type of superintendent they were looking for. And then, like Kim had already stated, once they had the data collected, they realized that their interim really fit what they were looking for. They went ahead and um, hired that person, and that was the end of that. So no slate, no. <laughs> right. Okay. Lynn. I spoke with Susan Buckley from Battle Creek, and uh, that was the longest conversation I had with her. She could not stop raving about MASB for them. Uh, she said it w the board itself did a lot of work, but um, MASB answered the questions, gave them directions, guidance. She felt they were, it was a true team effort. Uh, also, along with Scott's comment that MASB is in the state, and they really felt strongly about supporting um, someone a business in the state, but also because they are here, they're very in tune with what's going on in Michigan. Um, let's see, they brought they had 20 candidates, narrowed it down to six, and then two candidates, and one they hired. Out of those two, one was clearly the their um, their choice. Um, she gave me a lot of other information about what we might want to do as a board when we do our process. Um, they did have two large public meetings where the community uh, members, she said, filled the auditoriums. And then afterwards, MASB had uh, evaluations for them or comment cards. And they filled these out, <coughs> MASB collected them, put them together, and gave them to the board. So after, after the... Uh, she said all the candidates, or it wasn't the candidates, but they went through all their, their list of 20 um, candidates. And then they had this community input, which she found very valuable. MASB did the legwork for that to bring that back to them. Um, let's see. She also said, watch out for candidates who tend to resurface. She said, there, <laughs> you know, I, I got that too. They, from um, <laughs> you just want to be careful mm -hmm. why they haven't been hired or they just keep showing up oh. in, in the different districts. Um, they used another search firm last time. Um, they, it was a very difficult search the last time. This one was great. Um, the board was unanimous, and last time it was a divided board and sounded like there were some real issues. And very generous. She even offered to send questions that they used in their interview process, and very helpful. I think that I think she talked to me for an hour. Wow. So anyhow, for them in Battle Creek, it was an excellent fit. So. Okay. Well, that uh, I think did any district go any district or reference get untouched. I think we caught them all right. Um, with that said, um, let's go around the table. And after you've heard what everybody else said, basically stake out who your top choice would be. And if it's very close to another, like, uh, uh, give me give me the two. So I'll start narrowing down. I'll start at the right this time. 
Lynn, I'll give you. Uh, oh, my first. I'm sorry. Yeah. I was looking at my notes. Oh, I'm sorry. You said the first choice. And if you have a clear first choice after everything you've heard, in addition to your own homework and your own impressions, who would you pick? I think I would probably still go with School Exec Connect. And you said probably. I'm going to press well, you a little probably bit. Probably I would go with. <laughs> otherwise. MLI, M MLI in, in my research came a close second. So, but I would um, support School Exec Connect. I would go School Exec Connect just because of their, the districts they've done in the past. You know, not that there's other search firms that may not also do a good job for us, but I'm also looking at um, references and what districts they have done before us. Kim? School Exec Connect with all the things that Angela just said. Okay. John? School exec uh, connect. I just think looking at the tough market, looking at the challenges that we're going to have ahead, and looking at the homework, which I think matches the references, I think it'd probably be the best fit at this particular time, given the market and given the need to be uh, as competitive as possible making that pool as competitive as possible. Scott? Not that it matters <laughs> at this point, but NASB. <laughs> Still there, okay. And Yvonne voiced Exec Connect without hearing a lot of the dialogue. Um, now I'll express mine. Um, I'll, I'll tell you, coming into tonight, I was really torn. Um, and I'll explain why in the public to hear a little more, kind of my thinking. I saw SEC with districts in Michigan that looked a lot like us, and that made me feel very good, but not having a clue who the recruiter was and not having a clue how it went. So I'm very glad to hear your references were plentiful on SEC to come away that they did a decent job. Uh, HYIA, my second choice, I felt very good about the lead recruiter when he was here. I, I really thought he's a, a get it done kind of guy, but I was very nervous about even while he was based in Michigan, which was different than HYA the last time we did it, Lynn and I were here for. He was based in Chicago. Uh, made that a little tougher, but the paucity of Michigan districts really left me unsettled. So tonight, seeing face to face the lead recruiter made me feel much more comfortable at SEC. And hearing some of the feedbacks made me feel very good about SEC and okay with HYA, but there were some comments about HYA that weren't overly abundant. Same with MLI, same with MASB. My biggest reservation with MASB is they've been, our recruiters have been basically large urban districts that don't look much like the Midland profile, so that's what made me nervous about, about that. So that said, uh, this having this gentleman here tonight helped me make my decision on, on SEC. Is, is my top choice. I feel comfortable now that that guy can lead lead our search versus I didn't want to, I would never vote for SEC without seeing him. I, I couldn't have done that. It would have been a bet, a big time gamble bet. So SEC would have gotten my vote. Yvonne would have said SEC, but she didn't hear the comments, so we'll leave it there. No, I won't consider this a vote, okay, because we have to, we have to, I'd like to, to vote on it. But Carl, I'm going to put you on the spot for a comment. While you're not directly involved in our search, you are and have been a superintendent for many years. You've dealt with many of these firms in the past. You may feel good, bad, worse, better on some of them. You care not to comment. I give you the choice to not comment. Uh, I know MLI was big in your search, but it's a different team of people there now when we did your search. Yeah. Um, do you care to comment on, on your observations or your, not only observations, but what you know out in the field, what superintendents think? Uh, no, not really. I think, Jerry, from the time you all made your contacts with your references and so on, you've got a good perspective here. Um, I only heard one comment that I think was a little bit of a red flag, and that was the candidate who said, um, don't rule out superintendents that don't have experience. When I look at everything that faces our district from budgets to, you know, what a board that is coming together and learning to coalesce and what challenges we face, my advice to you is I think that's going to take an experienced superintendent. Um, so I'm cautioning you to be really careful about that. And other than that, um, you know, I have, other than the two 
Chicago for Illinois firms here. I have relationships with the other two. I don't intend to use them ever again in my <laughs> career. It, um, but because I have relationships with them, I think I'll just leave it at okay, that. Okay, that's fair. I didn't want to put yeah. you on the spot too badly. Uh, just wonder if superintendent perspective if you have one. Thank yeah. you. Okay, um, at this point, we had a lot of people that thought saw SEC as their first choice. Uh, I'll, any more discussion? Before, well, let's ask for a motion, then we'll have more discussion. Does anybody care to move for SEC to be our search firm? I move that we consider having school exec connect as our superintendent search firm going, and, going forward. And enter into negotiations for an agreement with them? Correct. Okay. Yep. So we have a motion to uh, uh, try to engage SEC for a contract as our search firm. Do I have a second? Second. Angela seconded. Uh, with that in mind, uh, any more comments after we had all those comments earlier? No, Jerry, you did a wonderful job thank putting you. this all together, and I knew you did it very quickly and thoroughly. We have a thank you very much, and we have a long row to hoe. That's that's what I'll say at this point. This is the this is just the start. <laughs> it gets really interesting from here. Jerry, can I just make this comment to clarify for the rest of the board and really for the community? I'm here tonight at your suggestion. Mm -hmm. Just exactly. in case I would red flag something, given my experience, yep. that perhaps some of you might not. And I don't think that's really happened other than, than what I've said before. Yep. But as you move forward and plan your profile and develop your community forums, I won't have a presence at this meeting. It's, I mean, that's typical for superintendents. You step out of the way and allow the board to come together around that process. Yep. And that's how yep. it should be. Th thanks for coming, Carl. I should have yep. said that at the beginning of the meeting. Carl's, you notice there's no directors here. Carl was here for one reason tonight. And that was to basically allow us to ask that question we asked. Is, is there any perspective he has on a search firm as a superintendent who's gone through the process that he might be able to enlighten us on, good, bad, or ugly? Uh, from here on in, it is the board process. Uh, we hire a contractor to guide us through it because they're pros from Dover. They know what they're doing. They have the time to do it uh, because that's what we pay them for. Um, but it will be our process, our decision. Carl will not be involved in that. This is one time where this where the board is on their own yeah. and uh, needs to make that decision. The other thing CEO. I would say to you is also watch about this woman's workload because I heard a little difference between some of the firms that presented. You know, they will do what you ask them to do, and I heard some people describe a workload that's going to add substantially to Cindy. And you're paying a firm to do some money. Don't be afraid to have an expectation that they do some of that work. I hear you. It's yeah. uh, having. Thank you, Carl. She should be there to support. And, yes, sure. But don't let them take something that you're paying them to do and put yeah, on. We're not going to hand plate. Cindy to them. Um, yeah. That's that's for sure. Um, sure. The good news is we have two board members who've been through it, and maybe better news a president who's been through it. And so I'll just make sure that doesn't happen. That's a good good word. Just well, and maybe I can. That was another thing about SEC is that it wasn't just the one individual. They have a couple, you know, other individuals. And the person I spoke with from Rochester said that those other two individuals do a lot. You don't see them, but they do a lot behind the scenes. And, so. and what, what's going to happen to Carl's point is let's take, uh, you know, think of this process as an accordion. We're doing all the, uh, I call it expanding comments, and then we bring them. And, they, and that firm then brings them back together for us. What we have to be careful of is that in getting those expanding comments, it's not Cindy organizing everything, okay? Because that's many meetings, many things. We have to have them drive. She can give them contact info, but let them do the negotiations for the timing, the date, the location, uh, and not put that on onto Cindy because there will be a lot of those as we go forward. Thank you, Carl. Any other comments? Okay. Seeing none, uh, all in f well, we'll do a roll call vote. Scott? No. John? Yes. Oops. Yes. 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 Jerry, let me just, let me just Jerry, say yes. I, I say no in that I disagree with the board's decision at this point. However, I want to be clear, I will work with the board 100% to make this as smooth as we possibly can. Thank you, Scott. That, that's what we need. I appreciate that a whole lot. And so will our kids in the next 20 years, tech 10 years. And I vote yes also. So we have a five to one yes vote uh, with Yvonne not here to cast her vote. So SEC, I will engage uh, with, with approval of this motion. I will now engage 
SEC into a contract and agreement based on the terms they've laid out to us in their letter. If you notice, we didn't talk about price. We may have been a little remiss on price, but the good news is they're all very, very close, mm -hmm. very close. And when these firms do make promises on expenses, you heard the MLI guy say it loud and clear, and I, was, I really appreciated his frankness. He had said put $500 in his proposal, and he said, it's going to be more than $500. And what I've come to recognize in doing this, if you look at the items that incur travel expense, we are in control of that, okay? We control what candidates we select. So if we, can, if we select a candidate from Los Angeles, mm -hmm. our travel budget's going way up than if we pick a candidate from Troy, Michigan. Um, there's things like advertising. We control that budget. Um, what we don't control is the search firms travel to us to some degree. To the degree we, how many focus groups we pick and how well we organize that around single days, we mm -hmm. control that budget. Uh, so we don't, and we don't control, we control the budget of when we go to the other district. You know, that he can't forecast that. That's, God forbid, in Los Angeles. That's going to cost us a lot more than if it was in Charlotte, like it was the last time. So the expense guidelines, I, I find, are just guidelines. They're, they're not promises or commitments other than their expenses to get here. Okay, um, I will engage them. I'll call them all tomorrow, and we'll try to get a contract, and then they'll come back to us with starting to work. Um, he said it, every guy said it, a couple of key points. Scott, appreciate your comment. You know, we can agree to disagree, but once we agree, we agree and we move forward. Uh, second, um, we stay in the process, whatever that process gets defined to be. So right now, let's not reach out to other districts or friends we know and say, are they good candidates? Let's not go there because uh, I can just, like we said last meeting, upset candidates, confuse candidates. So at other districts particularly, you know, the Open Meetings Act, we got to walk carefully here so that uh, we, don't, uh, we don't lose a candidate because of inadvertent actions. Let's be very careful. Um, so I'll be the focal point. As you have concerns, please, please, please don't hesitate. And if you've seen me so through this process, I will be very verbal back. And then, just, then when we have to make a decision, it will be in this setting, not by email or by phone mail. Decisions will be made here. Information will flow. Facts will flow. Concerns will flow. But decisions will be made at this table in front of, in front of everybody. Okay? All right. Anything else? We stand adjourned.